Hello, this is Jared Nimi with a mini lecture on accept reject method for generating random numbers. Previously, we've talked about Monte Carlo integration, which is a simulation approximation to an expectation of this format, which can be written as an integral of that format, where you generate samples from f. For each of those samples, you evaluate the function h at that sample, and you take the average over these evaluations of h, and we know that the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem apply with some regularity conditions and converge to this expectation. Previously, we've also talked about the inverse CDF method for generating samples from f. Very briefly, this method involves sampling a uniform distribution, u, uniform sample, u, and setting x to be the inverse of the CDF of u. This is great if you have the inverse CDF of u, uh, C inverse CDF of x, uh, but if you do not, then what do you do? And in this example, we're going to assume that we at least have access to the probability density function f of x, or at least up to a normalizing constant. You'll see in a second. All right, so the idea here is that in order to obtain samples, that have a probability density function of f, the accept reject method is going to, using a proposal, sample a value x star. So g here is some density that's easy to simulate from, and we're going to get a realization from that density, uh, from that distribution, and we're going to call that x star. We're also going to sample a uniform 0, 1 random variable and call it u. Now we calculate this quantity f of x star divided by m times g of x star. And we ask the question, is our uniform less than that quantity? All right, so we're going to accept with this probability right here. All right, so if it is, we accept that as a draw from f. And if it's not, then we have to return to 1 and re repeat the whole procedure. All right, so you might be asking, what is this m? m is a constant that satisfies the following inequality, that m times g, which is our proposal density, is greater than or equal to our target density f for all x. All right, so just a few notes here. Uh, the first is that we can actually, for a particular proposal g and a target f, we can actually find what the optimal m is. The second is that if we know this m, we can find, and using this m, we can find the probability of acceptance, that's just 1 over m. And the last point is that uh, we don't actually need to know the normalizing constant for f, and we can still use this methodology, and I'll show that in an example in a little bit. But before I get there, I want to give the intuition behind what's going on. All right, so here's the idea. The idea is that the accept-reject method creates an envelope around f or maybe more formally, above f. All right, in this, form, this envelope, we're going to call m times g of x, or it is m times g of x. So in this picture, we have f. This is the density that we're trying to draw samples from. And then in blue, we have m times g of x. And so red is the density we're trying to sample from, and g of x, which, up, well, m times g of x is up here, All right? And so we're going to draw a sample from g, that's going to be somewhere along the x-axis, and we're going to draw a random uniform on 0, 1, and we're going to plot that on the y-axis, but we're going to scale it times m times g of x, All right? So here's the first example, All right? So this first example, x was 5.2, and this uniform times this quantity right here, right? This is m times g of x, where x here is 5.2. So this is m times g of 5.2. And our random uniform happened to put us right here between the x-axis and that m times g of x. And now we ask the question, is this u times m times g of x below the density for f? And if it is, we accept it. If not, we return and try to draw another uh, proposal and random uniform and see if it satisfies the criteria. 
All right, so second example here, we have x is 5.3, and our uniform times m times g of x landed us here, which was above the density for f, and therefore we did not accept. That's a blue x for not accepting. Try this a third time, we have 5.1, it's below the uh, density for f, and so we accept it. We can do this a whole bunch of times, and this is what we see. Right? Red are all the acceptances, and X's are all the rejects. And so we can see here over these uh, 100 uh, proposals, we get something that's starting to look like the density for f. All right. So here's the example on which this picture is based. The idea here is that we're trying to sample a normal random variable, a standard normal, that's truncated to be greater than 5. We can find its probability density function. It's just a standard normal renormalized so that it actually integrates to 1. And let's suppose that we use as a proposal a uh, shifted exponential. So here we have an exponential 1, we call it y. We add 5 to that, and that's going to be our proposal. All right, now we need to find m. We can find m, we can find the optimal m here by taking the soup over this ratio. We plug in the value for this ratio here, where this is now the shifted exponential. Uh, and I've also factored out the normalizing constant here for f of x, which does not involve x, and so therefore is not part of the soup. It turns out that this soup will be attained uh, at the left endpoint when x is actually equal to 5. So we plug in 5, and we find that m is about 5.19. Right, so that means our acceptance probability is going to be about one-fifth, or about 20%, a little bit less than that. And now we can propose samples from this, which means proposing samples from an exponential of 1 and adding 5. We can evaluate that ratio, f of x over m times g of x, and see if it's less than the uniform that we've sampled. And if we do that repeatedly, uh, we get this density right here. Here where the histogram shows samples from uh, f, and the red line is the true density for f. All right, so now I want to continue with this example and show that we actually did not need to know this normalizing constant at all. All right, so suppose we're still simulating, interested in simulating from the same density, uh, but this time we're just going to use the part that's not normalizing constant. All right, and we're just to distinguish it, we're going to call this f sub 2. All right, so this is the unnormalized density. All right, now we're going to calculate this soup over this unnormalized density and our normalized density g, which is again this shifted exponential. And the same thing is going to happen, it's still going to have a maximum at 5. But now that maximum is very small. So you can go ahead and note and work out the fact that m from the previous slide, this constant that's used in the accept-reject method, is just the normalizing constant times m sub, m sub 2. And what that then means is that this, this unnormalized density over m2 is always equal to the normalized density over m. And that's the only quantity that shows up in the acceptance probability. And therefore, we don't actually need to know the normalizing constant in order to use this methodology. And the only caveat here is that now m2 has no relationship to the acceptance probability. Right? Only m did when you actually used the normalized density. All right, so in summary, this accept-reject method is a way of obtaining samples from a density f when, for example, the, universe, the inverse CDF cannot be computed, or at least that it's very expensive to compute. Uh, and you at least can evaluate the density up to a normalizing constant. And in order to actually implement the method, you need a proposal distribution g. You need to determine a constant m, such that this inequality holds. And you need to, and you need to be able to sample a uniform draw.